Come on. Hey, do you know who makes moving to BC way better? Realtors who care enough about the environment to push for the adoption of more stringent regulations in our industry. And I recently got to talk to one of my favorites, Toronto's Chris Chopik. Chris famously brought the National Association of Realtors Green designation to Canada. And he recently made a run for the Canadian Real Estate Association's Board of Directors, where he was going to push for the adoption of a green agenda, something that others have tried and failed to do, myself included. Uh, but on the bright side, this year's president of the Canadian Real Estate Association, Cliff Stevenson from Calgary, is the first CREA president to ever hold the green designation. So that's good news. So check out my conversation with Chris, and for more information, check out the links in the description below. Chris Chopik, you are easily one of the most interesting people I know in the real estate industry. Um, in addition to being a noted speaker, author, and academic, uh, primarily around uh, climate change and sustainability, you are also famously responsible for um, translating the National Association of Realtors green designation into Canadian and bringing it up here. You've uh, worked with the provincial government in Ontario in crafting environmental legislation. Um, and in addition to all that, you are a very busy and sought after realtor in downtown Toronto. So now you're running for a director at large at CREA. Um, being a former director myself, I'm always fascinated to hear why people uh, choose to volunteer with organized real estate. So I was wondering, could you talk a little bit about, uh, about why CREA and, and why now? Uh, yeah, happy to. And thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to have this conversation today and for your encouragement to run um, also. Um, so for me, it's all about timing. I mean, this moment is the time. Uh, Bill Gates uh, and Mark Carney publishing books about how to transition to a climate friendly future. Elon Musk becoming the most wealthy guy in the world um, around all sorts of clean tech plays uh, and the federal government moving um, in response to COVID and in, in, in a move toward uh, an economic recovery to, to creating a climate uh, of energy efficiency, uh, clean technology and carbon reduction as part of an economic um, recovery strategy. All of these timings um, sort of provoked me to run for CREA director at large. Now, the uh, National Association of Realtors, I believe, has had a green plan since 2006. Um, other aspects of the industry um, have recognized and, and worked to mitigate climate change. The Canadian Home Builders Association has had their green plan in place since um, 2012, I believe. So where does green planning and climate change risk mitigation fit into the overall structure of what CREA can be doing both for its membership and for and for homeowners? Um, it, it, I mean, this is the, this is the, the, the opportunity. Um, and I'm, I have a master's degree in strategic foresight and innovation. The, the purpose of that is really to sort of predict beyond three years into a 10 year horizon what's going to happen in the future. And, and that's how I think. I think way ahead in the future about what the trends are um, and where things are going. It's a, it's a bit of a, you know, a where the puck's going, uh, Wayne Gretzky style kind of thinking. Um, and I think I was there in 2004 when I came to the real estate industry. Um, and I understand that it takes time to catch up and that um, these things were in debate. Uh, they're no longer in debate. There's no debate about whether climate change is real, except for in the deep corners of the conservative party, and they can figure that out themselves. But, um, you know, uh, really, it's it's a scientific fact. You, if you have any life experience at all, you can look outside. If you ride a snow machine in Canada, you know, you know your season's shorter. If you ski, um, if you dog sled, no matter what you do, no matter where you live, you can see the changes everywhere. And so the question now is, what do we do about that? Um, the federal government is definitely going to uh, be creating leading legislation. Canada wants to be a leader in the world, and we're, you know, we're going to try and do that. And in fact, Canadian building technologies, the way we build houses, is, um, you know, is looked at internationally as being a high standard of energy performance. So we're, we're already in a good place. Our housing market's in a good place. Can we get better? 18% of Canada's greenhouse gases come from residential buildings. And I think 35% or something like that come from our overall building stock. So does real estate have a role to play? 
thousand percent. Uh, Brookfield and others are already taking on the commercial side. WSP, you know, engineering firm, they're taking on how to retrofit, you know, big commercial buildings. So what do we, how do we as an industry help homeowners to get a handle on what I can do at home? Um, should I have solar panels or should I insulate my walls? And uh, if I'm going to spend money on renovation, where do I spend it? I think that um, there's, there's both um, an element of trust that we have as an industry. We, we're seeking trust. That's the cornerstone of our value proposition is this is a big, this is your biggest asset. You need to get good advice about what to do with this asset in order to get the most out of it, the most value and, and protect your wealth. So should, should, does CREA, do realtors have a role to play in helping Canadian homeowners to uh, understand what is carbon and what is greenhouse gas emissions and how do we do the right things in our houses to make our lives better and make the environment in the future better for our kids? Thousand percent. Is the time right to move on that? Yes, it looks like there's a real, I mean, Korea has a strategic board and aligning with what's happening from a federal government perspective, um, our reactions, having a seat at the table, having a seat that is knowledgeable and that's, that is participating from a place of knowledge, all of that stuff is what I hope to contribute as a board member. Let me actually just take that thread and pull on it a little bit um, because it was, it was a big concern of ours as we saw the federal government formulating some of its environmental regulation. It was a big concern that we weren't at the table, um, uh, not by invitation, and, and the organization itself didn't didn't really work to put itself there. And that was that was something that was a big concern to a lot of us. So one of the reasons I was really excited about hearing that you were um, willing to volunteer for director at large was the amount of experience that you have in working with the government and how you think the things that you learn there uh, might be brought to the benefit of, of organized real estate in, in Canada in general. Yeah, I think I can. Um, Kevin Lee, who is currently the CEO of the Canadian Home Builders Association, and he's really leading up um, uh, uh, driving new home builds toward a net zero energy standard. And so his builder members are really driving into that marketplace. Uh, Kevin came from Natural Resources Canada. And in fact, in 2009, Kevin invited me to be part of the Energy Rating Secretariat subcommittee, delivery subcommittee. So we were tasked with what the new Guide rating for houses looks like. Um, the content, how the content is presented in an understandable way. And so I was one voice of very many from um, consumer uh, advocates to uh, industry associations like HRAI uh, who were at that table. Uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from all the engineers who, were, uh, who are examining the building science and the complexities of that. And I also learned a lot about um, the various concerns from other stakeholders in terms of you know, how that is represented in the marketplace. Um, but there's, there's a clear alignment between the Builder Industry Association and where they're going, where Natural Resources Canada wants to go with respect to um, energy literacy among homeowners in Canada. And there's a second piece of that too, and that is that um, you know, the insurance industry, who I speak to relatively frequently, is deeply concerned about the low level of sense of risk around flooding and sea level rise and other kinds of property risk, uh, wildfire, uh, particularly in Western Canada. I mean, all of these issues are emerging as big time threats to real estate value in all markets. And so, you know, hopefully I can contribute something to that part of the conversation, but certainly I have been active within the broader housing marketplace, trying to keep a handle on what everybody's doing and wh what their motives are. Um, so that I can really act as a translator. Uh, now, I hope to bring that into uh, consideration at the board table so that CREA can bring as much value to realtors and homeowners uh, through, you know, uh, to, through getting on board. It's okay to be the first follower. You don't always need to be the leader in order to win. But it's clear that we have trust to lose by not being there and not doing a good job of that. It's a strange time to be conducting a campaign for director at large because obviously you you don't have the luxury of being able to meet a, a lot of the people that will be making that decision face to face through the process of the campaign is there is there something that you would like individual board members um, not just around the CREA table but um, the member boards themselves um, is there is there anything that you would like them to take away from the awareness component uh, that I think having a guy like you run for this position creates? 
Um, yeah. Okay. So let's say I'm at the table. I have lots of knowledge to contribute and connections to, um, and I can help take, you know, Korea take shortcuts to the right spot um, and contribute that to the conversation. Um, and, and I'm delighted to have that opportunity. If, however, I don't get selected, um, I mean, it's a it's a wonderful field of incredible professionals to be chosen from. So uh, I'm not going to be offended by that. But uh, Korea does need to move actively into this space. Um, in the in the marketplace of you know Biden's campaign in the U.S. right now, they're driving hard to for maximum disclosure of climate risk at a portfolio level. That includes every single REIT in Ontario in Canada. So if REITs are going to have to disclose climate risk, does anybody at the Korea table understand what that means? Sure. I do. Um, and I'll be publishing a book on that, uh, hopefully on April 22nd. But it, listen, um, people in, in Fredericton understand flood as well as people in Gatineau. Um, you know, people in Grand Forks understand flood. People in Fort McMurray understand wildfire. Um, I don't think there's a practitioner in any of those marketplaces that would say this is an irrelevant conversation. It doesn't matter to us. Uh, the energy piece is an important piece. It's less acute because the, the the risks are smaller and you know less hundreds of thousands of dollars for individuals at a time. But um, they are still very important conversations. We cannot miss this opportunity in time to get on board because we have public trust. Public trust. Look at look at your own portfolio in your own RSP investments and how they've performed. I mean, if you had a, a clean tech stock, if you had an, an ethical fund, it outperformed everything that was not ethical and that wasn't related to something that had disclosure of, um, of ESGs. Um, and ESGs are going to be part of how we think of investment in the future. So if we have, um, let's say, a public that is going to be looking at every investment um, class with, you know, what's the sustainability metric associated with it, and then they're not going to think about that with their largest asset, that's a missed opportunity. And we could do a great job of saying, hey, here's why, you know, you should really insulate your walls at home, because in the future, that's going to be a new standard. So the the contest for director at large seats can can be a real battle royale and who knows what's going to happen. Could you share what you think are three things that Korea could be doing to do a better job of risk mitigation when it comes to climate change, climate change policy? So to me, it's in terms of one, two, three, in terms of what Korea can do in response, the first is, you know, we need to be aligned with whatever federal policy uh, is coming out that faces Homer, and we need to have a seat at that table to shape it. Um, you know, we need to be a good translator to help uh, to homeowners have literacy around energy and climate um, and what it means to them as homeowners in Canada. The second thing is, Flood and fire, flood and wildfire are definitely the new knob and tube in our business. So we have emerging risk and we need to protect our members uh, from potential liabilities and ensure that they are well equipped to help educate the market about these emerging risks. And lastly, there's trust. Um, I think that Korea needs to declare that we are part of this conversation um, and that we're doing something to make the world a better place for our kids through actions. And those actions can be member education or, uh, or reaching out to help homeowners. They can be all a myriad of things, but they do need to be declared. We do need to say to the marketplace, we are part of the solution. And I think that's a really important piece. Well, I think that's an excellent answer. I don't have a vote. I wish that I had one. Um, one of the things that former directors will tell you about um, getting to the CREA table is it's often difficult to get up to speed with what's happening at the national level. And, you know, one of the things that I think is really exciting about your candidacy is, is I believe that you're, you're up to that speed and, and really past where the organization is right now. So, so your ability to deliver value to the membership from day one is something that, you know, I, I think would be fantastic. And I think that in the same way that 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 business is investing in the environment, I think that the Canadian Real Estate Association would do well to invest in a, a director like you that comes from a far less common perspective, particularly around that table. And I really, I really do wish you luck. I, I would like to help you in any way I can. Thanks, Paul. I mean, this is a great help. And, uh, you know, even 
um, unraveling the narrative in a conversation uh, with a like-minded pro like you uh, really makes a difference. And so thanks for taking the time to have this conversation. I really appreciate that. It was my pleasure and good luck. If you dig the channel, please like and subscribe. And if you really want to support us, come to me for a realtor referral when you're actually ready to move to BC. Mm -hmm.